Hello right bags, it's Jay Plays Games. Welcome to a Fallout 76 facts video. During the excitement of the E3 reveal where they gave us all the information we've been looking for about what Fallout 76 really is, even I got a little bit excited and maybe got a little bit confused with some of the stuff that was coming out. So, I've been doing a lot of research this morning. I woke up finally, I've stepped into the wastelands, ready, filled with the knowledge that you guys need to know about Fallout 76. First off, it is completely online only. There is absolutely no way you're going to play this game unless you've got an internet connection. There is going to be story and there is going to be a way that you can play the game, but you won't be able to do it unless you've got internet. Nowhere during the E3 experience do they say you can play in a single player capacity on your own server. However, I'm sure with feedback and the amount of hate that probably Fallout 76 diehard fans will give it, they may implement something like that or expand on that and really tell us for sure very soon whether or not you can play it completely on your own single player server. There are going to be dozens, yes not hundreds, dozens of players on the servers. Dozens of players could mean anything up to 70 or 80 players or it can mean something up to only 36. My betting is going to be on quite a small amount. I don't think it's going to be 70 players, 80 players. I really do think it's going to have smaller. But again, we'll have more information as that gets revealed. Now, unlike most survival games, when you jump on different servers, you have to start up from fresh. Fallout 76 will have your character's progression tied to your character. You'll be able to go around, joining your friends on different servers, helping them out, helping get whatever they want to get done, and then go back to another server. You don't lose any progression when you die. There is no permadeath in this game. So far, as of looking at all the trailers and all the information that's come out of the E3 conference, it looks like you're going to be able to have a maximum of four players in a clan or in a group. All the footage shown shows only four players and all the informational videos show only four players. And that would make sense if there isn't hundreds of players on these servers, but more something like 36 or 48 players. And what is the ultimate goal of playing this game? What is the ultimate goal of surviving in an online world? It's nukes, baby. Nuclear missiles are going to be a big part of the game. In fact, they are going to be a part of the quest. There is a story and there are quests. And this is what's confusing some people in thinking that it may be a single player experience. The overseer of Fort 76 tasks you with finding the keys to the codes so that you can go out there and activate nuclear missiles. Now these nuclear missiles will be able to be used against other players, but you're going to have to go out there and get special activation codes. You may not even be able to hold or take every single code. You may need to work with other factions, which will be other player groups, to activate a certain missile. And obviously if you're using them nukes on other people's bases, that means your bases can take damage from lots of different things. Not just the nuclear missiles, it also take damage from mobs and enemies around. They showed lots of times during the E3 conference, mobs attacking the bases, doing damage to some of their structures and the craftables. Now, obviously with them players, with the fact that you can launch nuclear missiles at each other, the game is going to be player versus player. You will be able to go up to someone and kill them and possibly take their loot. That hasn't been confirmed just yet, what you can do when you actually kill someone, whether or not it's just a case of giving you some caps, which shows off in the trailer here or whether or not you can actually go and raid them properly and take their stuff. Don't forget as well that survival doesn't necessarily mean hardcore. They joked a lot and said it's not going to be something really hardcore, it's going to be light core. That character progression tied to your one character does mean it's not going to be a hardcore survival game. Anyone expecting something like Rust or Ark is going to be a bit disappointed. Not 100% confirmed whether or not you're going to need food and water to survive or whether or not it's just going to be a simple like mechanic for the Fallout games where you eat and it gives you HP or stamina boosts, buffs and stuff. It is an online survival game, I think it is going to have that, but we haven't got that confirmed. What we do know is the building aspect is going to be much more robust. You can build anywhere. You will take one of these crafting benches and you'll be able to place it anywhere in the world. It's not like the Fallout 4 settlement system where there's only certain parts. You will be able to take this crafting bench and do whatever you want with it anywhere in the world. But some of the materials are going to be really hard to get hold of and they will be in radiation zones if you want to progress through the game. However, the bulk of the building stuff is pretty much what you'd expect from playing Fallout 4, the settlement seat part of the game and if you haven't had any experience with that and you're looking forward to trying that then you can go ahead and download Fallout 4 on the Games Pass on Xbox One for free right now. 
plus other games like The Division and The Elder Scrolls Online is also coming to the Games Pass on Xbox One. Interestingly, the beta will be available early on Xbox rather than PlayStation. Now, the beta page is actually broken at the moment with all the weight of people trying to sign up for it. However, it does look like the beta is only going to be available if you pre-order the game. Included in all three versions, the standard version, the tricentennial edition, and the power armor. Yes, that's right, a power armor version, you will get access to the beta. Here you can see all the details of how to get into the beta. You pre-order it, you'll then get the redemption code on your pre-order receipt or email confirmation. You then claim it at Bethesda.net. The website states it's the only way to get access to it by pre-ordering. And it confirms here that Xbox One is going to be receiving the beta first. You're going to be able to play it first exclusively on Xbox One. As of right now, no one knows the exact date of the beta, but with lots of rumours circulating that the game might be coming out in July, I reckon that's when we'll actually see the beta for it begin. And just like most betas, don't expect to carry any progress over to the full main game. Todd Howard joked about how the fact that the game is going to encounter lots of problems, particularly as they've never done an online game like this in the Fallout universe. And just a few things to round up all the information you need to know, some of the facts. It's not going to have a VAT system. Obviously it would be too OP playing that on an online multiplayer game. It does look like it's going to have a hell of a lot more items, guns and weapons added to the game. And there's going to be a ton of new creatures. Creatures like the Scorched Beast, Snallygaster, are going to also have the Mega Sloth, Grafton Monster, Feral Ghouls, Deathclaws like you would normally find in the Fallout games, and of course Super Mutants. There's also looking likely bandits or raiders that have the name Conqueror. It does look like there's also variations of these creatures as well. The Mega Sloth comes in two forms, Diseased Mega Sloth and a normal one. And the same goes for a death claw. So could it be the radiation zones? What happens when you've nuked somewhere, it turns the area into radiation zone and makes these creatures like that? Or is it some of the districts, is it some of the biomes, the areas that are naturally going to just be filled with radiation that make them different? You can see from this screenshot here, we've got the names of the biomes. Toxic Valley, Savage Divide, The Mire, Cranberry Bog and Ash Heap. Now we've also got these three nuclear signs. Now does that mean they have been infected by nuclear fallout? Or is that the nuclear missile site where you go to activate the nuclear missiles? You can see Toxic Valley at the top there is more than likely going to be the place where there will be nuclear fallout. Where you're going to need some decent armour and protection to go up there and get the resources you need to craft high-end weapons and armours. That we're not 200% sure just yet. The six districts that you'll be travelling around will all have very different feels to them. And even some of them districts will be hard to get into because of radiation. You will still be able to go and do and experience stuff in them zones as long as you've got the right equipment. So there you go. Every bit of information I can find, everything known that I can actually get together. If you want to keep up to date with all the Fallout 76 information, make sure you follow my channel. So there you go, there are still lots of questions to be answered and obviously this video doesn't cover every single aspect, we've only just received this information. I was really super excited last night, I did make a few errors in a video I previously did, but I am just hyped for this game. So to all the Fallout haters, you need to lighten up. Honestly, I thought communities were really toxic in Ark and Rust and other games that I follow and I'm part of. But my gosh, Fallout fans really do get extremely passionate and salty over the fact they're messing with their games. Now, to be fair, you're not messing with anything. This is a offshoot. This is a side game. This is a spin-off. It's not going to take over the world of Fallout. They're still going to carry on making Fallout 5 single-player offline experience. But Vezda have been stating this campaign all year, saying Player 1. So, don't worry. I can see the negatives. I can see how people really get passionate about their game. They've followed for a long time. You've played Fallout 3, you've played Fallout 4, New Vegas. But don't forget... Fallout 1 and 2 was completely different, it was completely isometric, and like I said, this isn't the main game, it's going to be an offshoot. What's going to happen if they implement multiplayer in Skyrim 6, or Elder Scrolls 6 I should call it, what's going to happen when they've got that shoot hauled in? We don't know what Bethesda are really going to do in the future, maybe they'll always add online capabilities to their games, but I don't think so, I think they'll go back to how they've had it. If you're a survival fan, please comment down below, tell me what you're most looking forward to in this game so far from seeing it. Is it going to draw you away from Ark Survival Evolved or Conan Exiles or Rust? 
and for the Fallout casual fan or the Fallout fan that just likes the games and isn't that bothered about the fact it might be online, are you tempted or excited about playing this game? Let me know in the comment section down below. Keep it clean or I won't keep it clean back. I am Jay Plays Games. This has been a Fallout Facts and Questions video. I'll see you right back to another one very soon.